Do you understand what type of a place we're gonna go to? Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm getting the picture. This is the route that a lot of the migrants take up to the Panama border. Dated October 14, 2015. No problem here. God will help us all. We'll be in USA before 2016. Underline. Got to. I got a day. Take. No go. No buy. Got to. Four days. Take. No go. No buy. Not buy. If you can get halfway around the world on foot, or by any means, and get through this jungle, you can do almost anything. These people are not good. These Colombian people are bad. They yeah, want money. There's a hidden agenda here. You know, you disappear here. They bury you. Who the hell is going to find you, man? It's been smoking mirrors since we got here, man. Don't record. <laughs> Even if you don't believe in illegal migration, as human beings, I hope we all make it to Panama. This wild and shadowy jungle is a keeper of secrets. The Darien Gap is home to rare species and indigenous villagers. It also hides people smugglers and drug runners and the discarded bodies of those they have murdered. Many who enter do not come out. But for people who dream of living in the United States, it's still a risk worth running. Throughout my career, I've reported from dangerous places. But the story of the Darien Gap has been on my mind for as long as I can remember. It's a black zone to the extreme. If something goes wrong, you're on your own. I've been prepping for this story for more than nine months. Waterproof matches, all-purpose knife, eating tool, um, anti-mosquito arsenal here. I'm hoping to meet migrants who fled their homelands to attempt this journey. I'm leaving behind my partner Susie and my daughter to join them as they cross the Darien. It's a 150 kilometer jungle wilderness between Colombia and Panama that no sane person would dare enter. And yet each year, thousands of people do. Migrants and refugees from around the world including Syria, Afghanistan, Nigeria, and Nepal, are willing to risk everything for a long-shot chance at reaching the USA. In many ways, their story is the story of my family. My father took a gamble of his own to reach the United States. In the years running up to the revolution of the late 70s, he left Iran. Unable to get a visa to the U.S., he bought a ticket to Canada, then faked an illness during a layover in New York. His gopher-broke stunt secured a safer life for us, free from threats and oppression. So how many days are you going to be off the grid and in the jungle? It's hard to say. Well, it just depends on the conditions and the security on the route. Thank you. Please just drink. 
drink a lot of water, even if it's humid. Um, you need it for sure. I'm taking my chances in the Darien Gap because I want to experience firsthand the struggle of migrants. The United Nations estimates globally more than 65 million have been uprooted due to war, poverty, and terrorism. Ordinary people thrust into a dance with death as they brave deserts and seas. And now, the jungle, where I'm going. If migration is the story of our time, the Darien Crossing is its crucible. My first stop is Bogota, the capital of Colombia. The streets are plastered with reminders of the violence that's gripped the country for more than five decades. Colombia is known for being the cocaine powerhouse of the world, producing the drug in greater quantities than any other country. But today, Colombia hides another secret trade, migrant trafficking. Policia. I meet up with a friend and colleague, Carlos Villalon, a veteran photojournalist. We're here. <laughs> We've both been documenting migration issues for years, and we both chase stories in places most would rather avoid. Carlos is well connected in Colombia after covering the drug war for more than a decade. Things change like this it's fluid. in the film. Yeah. You know, I mean. And I'm relying on him and his connections to get us through the journey safely. So you, you understand what type of a place we're going to go to? Yeah, I'm getting the picture. <laughs> like, we're going to take a look and we're going to talk to super reliable sources. So that's why if we made the decision that it's a no-go, we're really going to be saving our asses, really. I mean, it's not a joke. That's what I'm telling, you know? We're going to be smart. Yeah. yeah. But we've done our homework. Can we look at a map of the, the <laughs> tentative route? Maps of the but do you have a, even a Google map that we could just look at? Many of the places we'll visit aren't marked. There are no roads. It's lawless and uncharted. Basically, from here to here to Bihau is just a boat. And then we're going to get to the Wangnam village in a boat, walk, walk, and then boats. We're basing our trip on a hand-drawn map from our local contacts. We sleep in Paya one day with the police, and then we go to our knowledge, no film crew has ever made it through the Darien before. Carlos and I, along with our cameraman Roger Arnold, will attempt the trek alongside migrants on their way to the United States. We want to walk in the shoes of those fleeing persecution to document a migrant journey few have heard of. Drug runners, leftist rebels, and cutthroat criminals also use the same route we'll take. It's risky. Estas tres es solo una dosis. Para leve, sí. Para el siguiente leve. Para leve. Then there's nature. The Darien is rife with jaguars, crocodiles, venomous spiders, and snakes. In the Darien region, what are the most common symptoms of the bites that are treated in that region? Necrosis, neurotoxins, hemorrhaging, and effect on lots of sweat. Yeah. And you start melting inside. So it's multifaceted. Yeah. There are no medical facilities in the jungle, so our survival may depend on this snake bite training course and our limited supply of anti venom, which we'll carry with us. Most of the snakes, 99% of them, it's one shot to each butt cheek and then the IV in the arm. The most dangerous one that yeah. is a very well, so which is like two meters long Up to or six, six yeah. beats you on the vein, you have 10 minutes to leave. So 
we're not gonna use this thing on you and we're gonna keep it for the next one that yeah. gets, at that point you know, I'm dead weight so yeah. save yourselves <laughs> yeah. save yourselves you have to be <laughs> your shovel <laughs> no in that case you take the machete just hack the limb off yeah We've prepared as much as we can, taking sat phones, trackers, and medicines, resources the migrants go without. So we travel north to the tip of Colombia, to Turbo, a hub for drug and people traffickers. Migrants fly into Latin American countries like Ecuador and Brazil, where entry visas aren't required. It's here, on the edge of Colombia, where they board boats and enter the void that is the Darien Gap. But not all the boats departing from Turbo make it. We're told that a lot of the migrants who died on the water when they were traveling in really rickety boats were buried here, anonymously. If you look here, it just says N, N, no name. Looks like there are about a dozen or more migrants buried here in the mausoleum. Out on the river, our journey into the Darien jungle truly begins. This remote region is largely untouched by the modern world. Smugglers have long used this route to move timber, guns, and cocaine. We just made the turn up the Cacodica River. This is the route that a lot of the migrants take up to the Panama border. It's uh, pretty much virgin jungle from here on out. Our driver grapples with the foliage that's choking the river. This area is controlled by the notorious revolutionary armed forces of Colombia known as FARC. For more than 50 years, the leftist rebel group has been fighting to overthrow the Colombian government. Both sides are now in peace talks, but the rebels can be brutal. They murdered a Swedish backpacker in the same area just a few years ago. Many migrants have also vanished on this route. So. This might be the end of the line for us, for now. The water in some places is less than a foot deep, and the bottom of the boat is starting to scrape a little bit. This guy's trying not to grind the, the rotor blades on the motor. This looks like we might have to get out and pull pretty soon. A small ramshackle hamlet where we hope to gain permission to pass through FARC turf. Our safety depends on their good favor. We meet with Elber, a FARC representative. These men and women call the shots in this part of the Darien. They tell us that one of the few ways to earn a living out here is through drug and people trafficking. Yeah. 
So Elber has just invited us to a clandestine meeting of the local FARC political committee. So I'm just going to follow these guys and see what they have to say. They're not comfortable with our cameras. But a few hours later, we're given permission to proceed through FARC territory in the Darien. But can we truly trust them? We push on, motoring further upriver, hoping to cross paths with migrants bound for the United States. The deeper into the Darien we go, the more vulnerable we become. Amigo. We stop at the village of Bihau. known as a way station for migrants about to enter the most difficult part of their journey to America. <laughs> Our plan is to wait here until the next group of migrants arrive. In the meantime, we immerse ourselves in local life including the delicacies. Locals here hunt crocodiles for fresh meat and hearty stew. Much like the migrants who regularly pass through, these villagers also dream of a better life. <laughs> this village lacks steady electricity, schools and clinics. People here die of treatable illnesses like malaria, Quantos años tienes? Ocho. Ocho años. ¿Te gusta el fútbol? Sí. Incoming migrants buy supplies here and pay local guides hundreds of US dollars to take them through the jungle to Panama. The guides risk prison if caught by Panama's border guards. But villagers see it as a service that brings much needed money into the community. For the migrants, it's a lifeline. Without a skilled guide in the jungle, death is one wrong turn away. I was just looking around this room where we're boarding up and on the window I found a message. It says nine Somalians. There's a list of nine names here and it's dated March 10th, 2014. At the bottom it says Panama All. It's another piece of evidence that we're on the immigrant trail. While we kill time, waiting for the next group of migrants to show up, normal village life goes on around us.
It's been five days, and we're still waiting to share the stories of those seeking freedom in a better life. But are we chasing shadows? Thank you. Finally, my producer rings with some news, and we learn why we haven't seen any migrants. The Panama border has been shut down. The migrants' route has been blocked. Things are so fluid right now. You know, I mean, you know, one thing is uh, the migrants are going to find a way through regardless. Um, and you know, if they're stopping them up in Caporgana near the the coast. And now, you know, in the, the Darien, I mean, there, there are going to be other routes, and it just it opens up another opportunity for the, the smugglers. So, you know, it's, it's like water. They're going, to, they're going to keep moving and finding the opening. It's believed some 25,000 migrants crossed into Panama last year, bound for the United States. Nobody knows how many made it all the way. But in the middle of our Dateline shoot, the country's president declares migrants will now be rejected without exception, whether refugees or not. So what do you think if we continue, we get as close as we can? Yeah. We just keep keep getting intel from the locals, maybe they know some alternatives. We're gonna do as we plan and then we're gonna go up there anyways. This three hours. Three hours to get there. Restless, after a week of waiting, we hit the water in search of other villages where migrants sometimes pass through. seen anyone on the river all day. So when the driver tells us he smells migrants, I'm skeptical. But then, people. How you doing, guys? How are you guys? You speak English? Two weary stragglers. We walk in the muddy water to catch up to their boat. Hungry and exhausted, they tell me their homes are in Bangladesh and Nepal. When do you leave Bangladesh? Oh, one month. One month before. They've come halfway around the world, and as their smiles fade, their hardships tumble out. I 
No, just a little bit more. Let me rest. Sleep, shower, rest. Okay? Okay, Jolly, cello. Okay, cello. Together, we trudge two hours up the river shallows back to Bihau village, where we've been staying. The migrants can relax for the first time in days. They've traveled overland from Brazil, through Bolivia, Peru, and Ecuador to Colombia. In the UN-built migrant hostel, they read messages from those who've braved the journey before them. And then leave their mark. Confident that when the next group reads their names, they'll be safe in Panama and continuing onward to the U.S. People join migration trails across the globe for all kinds of reasons, mostly to escape danger and persecution. But some cross borders for purely economic reasons. We can't know for sure if these travelers are genuine refugees. It's late, but 20-year-old Arafat from Bangladesh wants to tell me about his journey so far. Okay. Thanks. With the help of a translator via satellite phone, I learn more about why he's here, risking his life in the Darien Gap. So, আজও জানি না যে আমার মা বাবা কেমন আছে আমার মা বাবাও জানে না যে আমি কেমন আছি আমি কোথায় আছি এখন আর you scared about this journey about what lies ahead about all the unknowns ভাই একটা জিনিস কি আমার একটা মনের আছে কি আল্লাহকে শরণ করলে সবকিছু ইনশাআল্লাহ সফল হয় by nightfall Nine more migrants have joined us from Cameroon, Togo, and Gambia. The group now totals 20. They're bound together by a shared hope of starting over in the United States. This one? The kind of life my father envisioned and got for us. In the morning, we plan to enter the Darien Gap together. Good night. Sleep well. Good night, man. Until now, it's been a waiting game in the village of Bihau. Okay, quantos dos sardinas? Sí, dos. But today, we're heading off. You want to take all of this? No, just this snack. We've connected with 20 migrants, <laughs> and they're allowing us to document their journey into the jungle, where kidnappings and killings are rife. Everyone is running away from something. The what exactly? I'm yet to find out. Our local guides could mean the difference between living and dying out here. As the migrants wait anxiously in the boats, a dispute breaks out. No! 
And they want it. We are nine of us. Nine. We paid all the money. One, two, three, four. Hey, I'll give you the money. Seven, eight. Collect, give him, give him the money. The guides are asking for more money. We have money. We gave him twenty, twenty. We gave him twenty, twenty dollars. Yeah, no, no, ten dollars. Three times the agreed upon price. Change that money to him. We paid all the money. Everything. We nine, huh? No one has any leverage out here. Six hundred dollars each. Ciento dollars. Para que le pedimos ochocientos para después rebajar. Mucho, hermano. Mucho, mucho. Bastante lo ve usted, pero yo yo lo veo poquito y usted lo ve bastante. The migrants tell me the locals are profiting from their misery, but the villagers themselves suffer poverty and the corrupting effects of the drug trade. Three hundred each. Thirty each. Okay. It's not fine, but we need our guides to keep us safe, so we pay up and head off. I ride with Abrima, a political activist from Gambia. Brima tells me he fled after learning his name was on a government hit list, leaving his pregnant wife and two children behind. He's never heard of the Darien Gap. He just knows there's a jungle he must cross if he wants to reach the United States. We leave the water, and the hardest part of our journey begins. We will have to scale steep ravines and navigate muddy tracks strangled by thick jungle. Within minutes of stepping under the canopy, we feel sealed off from the outside world. Our destination is Paya, a native village on the Panama side of the Darien. There's no map, no coordinates to follow. We're aiming for a stone obelisk that we're told marks the border. If we're lucky, we'll get there in two days. Allah, help me. Allah. 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 Thousands of migrants trekked this route last year some after fleeing the wars in Syria and Afghanistan. Nobody knows how many died out here. In my experience, most refugees are ordinary people forced to take extraordinary risks. Ready, guys? Yeah, we should be able to. Like Abrima, yeah. Yeah, yeah. who's seeking political asylum in the US. And like Evelyn, the only woman in our group. Are you scared about this trip? Very, very scared. But I don't have any choice. With the war that we have in Cameroon, Boko Haram killing all our brothers. We don't have no choice than to run, yes. to go and hide ourselves somewhere. She struggles up the mud slick hills where you can't get a foothold, enduring unbearable heat and humidity. Evelyn tells me she was a hairdresser in her home country, Cameroon. Now, she's in the fiercest of jungles. 
scarcely able to breathe. I've trekked in jungles before, but here the menace and isolation are incomparable. Then, a reminder of a danger bigger than the jungle itself. The skull faces toward Panama, presumably a warning to anyone who dares enter Colombian FARC territory. We're feeling rattled and move quickly to find the others. Traveling in a group gives the comfort of strength in numbers. But that's an illusion. We lean on each other, but in our minds, we're on our own. All of a sudden, I got fucked. Yeah, my mama. Pensé que iba a llegar hasta allá perfecto, pero voy a llegar hecho mierda, pero llego, de que llego y llego. Drenched in sweat, Carlos sucks on glucose. The jungle is cruel. It soaks you as it sucks you dry. We're guzzling liter after liter of precious water, unsure of when we'll find it again. Momir, one of the Bengalis, says he's feeling feverish and can't go on. Don't throw that one. He begs someone to help him carry his bag. Just open here and you see the everything. Open. But there are no takers. He's forced to decide which of his meager possessions he can do without, so he can keep walking. We had hoped to reach the border by nightfall, but our pace is slower than expected. Hey, brother, man. The rows of leafcutter ants that line the trail make it look easy. Look at the forest. I've never moved in this type of forest since I'm born. Living in Africa, I don't know this type of forest. Very hard. Too difficult for a woman. This is too much for me, too much. You're the only woman here. The only woman. After 12 brutal hours hiking in treacherous conditions, we finally stop and make camp for the night. So we 
ada sih. Camping in camping camping. Okay, until five o'clock morning. Let go. So tired. Oh, but you lie down, sleep, sleep. The mosquitoes out here are relentless. And as darkness falls, their appetite intensifies. Finish again. No. Finish. Finish. Thank you. Zika virus, dengue, and yellow fever are all prevalent here. The jungle is not easy, but you have seen it with your eye. Abrimas traveled for weeks to get this far. He traveled from Gambia to Ecuador, where entry visas are not required. From there, he traveled overland to get to Colombia. But this, without a doubt, is the toughest part of his journey. You ever done this tired before? No, never encountered tiredness like this before. Never happens to my life since. This one? Never. It's going to be okay? Oh, sure, sure, sure. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay, you know. But it's not easy, absolutely. I'm sure it's going to be okay. Yeah. I'll make it to the final destination. Yeah, man. Even if Ibrima makes it into Panama, there will still be five more countries to cross before reaching the United States. We know that a few days ago, Panama's president closed the border with Colombia to stop the flow of migrants. Tomorrow we'll push to the border. We don't know what will happen when we get there. Good night. Good night. The police team ready. <laughs> the hangover of a rough night's sleep is tempered by the prospect of reaching the Panama border. Let's go! It's a mixture of nerves and excitement. The border is hidden somewhere deep in the jungle ahead. When we cross it, we'll still have at least 30 kilometers to walk to get back to civilization. We're anxious about meeting the Panama border police, called Senefron. They usually focus on drug trafficking. Now they have new orders to stop migrants. We worry that it could cause problems for the group we're traveling with. more minutes to the border so this is the final push and then we're in Panama let's go At last, we reach the border of Colombia and Panama, the hinge of South and Central America. The migrants are not out of the Darien yet, but they enjoy the moment as they should. They've just left another continent behind. How do you feel? You think you can make it all the way? Yeah, this one. I'll make it, inshallah. By the grace of God, I'll make this it. One. Because I think the hardest side of the journey is almost done. What I encountered, me, I never encountered this throughout my life. It's too hard. Give me some pitch too hard. What is the problem, amigo? No, no. What is the problem? Somos caballeros. We're in Panama now. And with the border closed only days ago, the guides are edgy. They could be arrested for helping migrants cross the border. I remember the Panamanian law. They decide we should split up. We gotta tell them. 
Look, man, if the police catch you with this guy, this guy is going to jail. They say the trail is very easy to follow, and it's about two hours to the Paya River, and the village is just after that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay? Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay, we'll see you in fire. Yeah. See you. Take care. Okay? See you. See you there. As I wave goodbye, it crosses my mind I may never see them again. We'll travel separately to maximize everyone's safety. We stay with our guides, and the migrants walk ahead. The guides set a blistering pace. And then, they're gone. I become paranoid I'm being set up for an ambush. I can't see the guides, or Carlos, or Roger, our cameraman. An hour passes, or is it two? I'm all alone, dizzy, lost. We prepared nine months for this journey, taking every precaution. The migrants came with nothing, not knowing what they were getting themselves into. Out here, the line between survival and oblivion is a slippery one. Finally, Carlos staggers in. But there's no sign of the guides. Now, wait a second, I have all the money in my bag. And they know I have money. So maybe they set up an ambush or something like that. I'm walking in. Yeah, but these guys, can go they wrong. hug you. Yeah. You know, you disappear here. Mm -hmm. They bury you. Who the hell is going to find you, man? And they're going back. That's it. That's it. It's hardcore place. Like here, you don't want to have an enemy on these people, yeah. really, because yeah. they, they hug you. Yeah. It's tricky, man, tricky place. With the guides gone, we attempt to find the river and a way out of here on our own. Our satellite tracker isn't working because of the thick jungle canopy and cloud cover. We have no idea where we are or where the migrants are. They'll also be looking for a way out of here with no guides, not even a compass. So we've been hiking for the last two hours with all of our bags and we're tapped out on water. We're still up at altitude, so. We're in a bit of a fix right now. We gotta get to a water source one way or the other. We've got iodine, so we can purify it, but we need to get something in our system because we're all getting a little dizzy. And it's getting darker. Carlos is getting desperate. He drinks from a dirty puddle. He's past caring about sickness and disease. And then... Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. 
Adelante. Buenos días. Bueno, bueno. We walk right into border guard soldiers. Thank you, my friend. It's the first time in my life I'm relieved to face the barrel of an automatic rifle. Buenos días. The migrants are here as well. They're under armed guard. We can't talk to them for film. No, no grab. No grabes. Don't record. As we're led away, I hear a Brima call out to me. Don't forget about us, brother. We have the right passports, which means we're free to enter Panama. But in a devastating blow, an officer tells us the migrants will all be sent back into the Darien, given no chance to prove if they are refugees under the UN Convention. If they'd arrived five days earlier, their fate would be different and they'd now be continuing north towards the U.S. They might have given them some water, but they have to march back up the same way they came into Colombia. He said it's a presidential order, it's out of his control, he's torn, but those are the orders, so. Looks like they're all on their way back to Colombia as we speak. It's unthinkable. The Darien Crossing is the darkest passage of the global migration phenomenon. Our reporting bears witness to this journey, but we still don't know how the story ends for the 20 migrants we traveled with. I've reached out to some of them, but my emails have gone unanswered. It's been four months since I returned from the Darien, and my hope of hearing from them is fading. But I hope all the same. <laughs>